Good morning, folks. I have this slightly sped up for aesthetic purposes. The Smoky Mountain in Mexico erupted violently yesterday with onlookers in droves who had gathered as red rocks began tumbling down the mountainside hours earlier. This is the fifth volcano to light up in the last few days. Ash is already affecting the locals and more reports will be in its sunrise. I've linked a live internet camera that automatically updates so you can just leave it up. Oh, caught a little eruption there. Cool. Not so cool is NASA's chemtrails on steroids. It's pretty, but that's about the only good thing about sounding rockets carrying trimethyl aluminum payloads to dump in the upper atmosphere. It's an attempt to vector analyze ionospheric wind. Dislike. The ESA has an article out about gases interacting with our black hole. This is an Electric Universe channel and we question what is truly at the galactic center, but nevertheless the observations are quite intriguing. Fast moving particles are likely magnetically driven, and when they spec the molecules in the nearby gases they found a lot of water and hydroxyls. NASA's Earth Observatory, here showing a before and after of the largest tropical glacier on Earth, at least it is for now, it is fading. Shifting to the alert map where we have an update from the Palisades nuke plant, 79 gallons of radioactive water leaked into Lake Michigan over the weekend. They claim there is no danger. On that topic, I'd like to share an LA Times article from yesterday about the San Onofre nuclear plant and how it might be shut down forever. The flash flooding quit in Saudi Arabia while a sandstorm took its place. The heat-baked half of India is now in declared drought state, meanwhile the east coast up to Bangladesh in severe storm warnings. Queensland coastline might see thunderstorms this evening. Meanwhile, the western watches shift eastward with the clouds. Europe has two lines of rain moving across the continent, but the eastern storms crossing Greece have been the most concerning. The Pacific cells are weak, shifting slowly while the big eastern low crept up the coastline yesterday. But between the two, in the central states, we have another convergence beginning. This convergence centers in this low, basically the same spot as yesterday, colliding warm, moist southern air with drier, cooler air from the Rockies, and when they equalize, the energy is evident. Severe watch zones are here tonight, and please be sure to stay informed. Looking at the solar wind, it appears that the coronal hole stream has peaked out, and it's on the way out. Magnetic disturbance is minimal, and the inductions are sticking to the baseline, still evident as the speed remains near 500 kilometers per second. Now I come to Stellarium to kick off the closing. If you could eliminate the atmosphere and see what the sun blocks out, you'd see Mercury and Mars conjoined today. If you'll notice the moon, I'll click ahead one day, putting it right in the middle of the sun, Mars, and Mercury. One more day shows it on its way out, but before it departs that meeting in heaven, the moon will cause an annular solar eclipse over the Pacific. New Zealand, Australia, Hawaii, some good shots. Now it does make two in a row that the US can't see, but Later this month, we do get a lunar eclipse pretty much dead perfectly visible. Earth's footprint, our magnetic connection to the sun, is firmly on the western limb with the connections you see to the right. Flaring has been dismal since that brief uptick last week, partly due to the inactivity of some beastly sunspots. They were huge when they showed up, morphed around for more than 10 days, and are leaving without having contributed yet. Also got some new spots cresting on the north. The umbral field remains wide open to Earth. I'll leave you with a filament dancing on the northwestern limb. There were no Earth-facing eruptions in the last 24 hours. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.